It has come down to this, an emergency request to the U.S. Supreme Court for a stay of execution in the case of Theodore Bundy has been rejected this evening. The vote was five to four. Bundy is scheduled to die in Florida's electric chair tomorrow morning at seven. There may still be some last-ditch legal maneuvers that could cause yet another delay in the execution, including an appeal for clemency to the governor of Florida. But just by way of background, since 1925 in Florida, there have been 202 appeals for clemency, and only six have been granted. And Governor Bob Martinez, who will have to make that clemency decision on Ted Bundy, has already indicated that he wants the execution to take place. Indeed, Bundy's murders, those for which he is being executed, there are three, and at least 20 others to which he has confessed, have made his execution a rather popular event. Here's more on the Bundy story from Nightline correspondent Judd Rose. These are just a few of Ted Bundy's victims, the dead and the living. I say this for each member of my family, and I'm certain for the other families too. Nothing is ever, ever the same again. I find myself even and even now when I'm in a crowd uh, looking for uh, for everything he did to the girls, the bludgeoning and the strangulation, humiliating their bodies, torturing them. I feel that the electric chair is too good for him. It's been a long time, 15 years since the first murder, 10 years since he went to death row. But now it's just hours. Unless there's a last minute stay at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, they'll throw the switch on the electric chair at Florida State Prison. And finally, the tragic, twisted saga of Ted Bundy will be over. He is an affront to civilized society. Uh, he decided that he was not going to play by anybody's rules that he wanted to kill, um, and he was uh, going to kill, and he was going to continue killing. He's convicted of three murders, but authorities think he actually killed 36 and perhaps many more. There have been other notorious serial killers. David Berkowitz, New York's son of Sam, who killed six women. Henry Lee Lucas, who claimed to have killed hundreds in the Southwest. John Wayne Gacy, convicted of murdering 33 young men near Chicago. And Juan Corona, convicted in the deaths of 25 farm workers in Northern California. Misfits, loners, drifters. But not Ted Bundy. Here is a man who seemingly had everything. He's, he's intelligent, he's charismatic, he's handsome. He was on his way in the Republican Party. I thought he would be governor of Washington now rather than going to the, to the chair. Bundy had gone to college and law school, worked in politics. Men admired him, women liked him. But behind the mask was a depraved killer. Starting in early 1974, he began stalking pretty young women. Once he got them alone, he would bludgeon them, rape them, strangle them, then leave their bodies in the wild for the animals to finish them off. Many were never found. Ted enjoyed the thrill. There was a, an inward thrill in selecting a victim. And it was usually at night. It was usually after he'd had a couple of beers to steady his nerves. And he would go out and he would literally hunt. The murders spread from Washington to Oregon, Utah, and Colorado. And when Bundy was finally caught, everyone was stunned. We still don't believe it. It just, just can't be. I keep shaking my head day after day, saying, how can this be? Because our son is the best son in the world. He's a very normal, active boy. And Bundy himself showed his peculiar arrogance, saying the legal system would prove his innocence. <laughs> well, I'm sure it works, and you've got to have faith it'll work, or else you'd be, you'd be reduced to some kind of, uh, you know, mumbling idiot. Uh, but Bundy wasn't done yet. He escaped from jail, was recaptured, and escaped again. Changing his appearance like a chameleon, Bundy continued to kill until his bloody journey brought him to Florida, where in January of 1978, he went wild in this sorority house, viciously assaulting four women. Two died. A month later, he raped and strangled a 12-year-old girl. Shortly after, Ted Bundy was caught. Since I have been in Dade County, I have been allowed to... Don't shake your finger at me, young man.
Bundy's trial, complete with live TV cameras and the defendant acting as his own lawyer, was a national sensation. Finally convicted and sentenced to die, Bundy still refused to accept the blame for his crimes. Because it is not a sentence of me, it is a sentence of someone else who's not standing here today. Ted's a sociopath, an antisocial personality. They have no consciences as, as we know it. They truly feel no empathy for other people. They don't understand other people's pain. The rest of us are there to make them feel better. Bundy's been consistent to the end. It was only this weekend that he began admitting his crimes, thinking it would buy him some time. Today, Connie Wilcox learned that Bundy had confessed killing her daughter Nancy 14 years ago. Ted Bundy needs to die. He needed to die 10 years ago or longer, and uh, he should not have been allowed to live this long. In the places he ravaged, few disagree, like on the campus of Florida State. And personally, I think he should be fried right away. Um, what he did was, it was grotesque. And the impending execution has been the source of all sorts of gallows humor. I'm making a statement that I think it's time for Bundy to go. And apparently it is. Ted Bundy's execution is regarded by most with the same lack of remorse he always showed his human prey.